Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with How I Discovered Debussy. Now, I was kind of lucky because back in the day, even in public school, we had music appreciation classes. We had a little textbook called Making Music Your Own or something like that. And, you know, there were different ones, of course, in different grades and whatnot. And my first encounter with Debussy was in grammar school. I don't know. I was in like fourth or fifth grade. And they played us Prelude to the Afternoon of a Fawn. And, you know, I, you know, when you're that age, you don't know what the hell Impressionism is. You know, they talked about it. They show you a Monet. <laughs> you know, you look at the water lilies and then they say, oh, it's Impressionistic. Maybe they'll show you a Syrah. It's pointillistic. You know, it's like the paintings are more interesting than the music. Let's not kid ourselves, at least when you're that age, because the music takes time. The painting you look at, you go, oh, that's pretty. The music, it goes, da, 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 da. When is it going to end? It's only like nine minutes long, right? But that seems an eternity when you're that age. Oh, it bored me to tears. The only thing I liked was the harp part. You know, because the harp's going. I thought that was beautiful. That was nifty, but there wasn't enough of it. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, it's a very quiet, slow, fuzzy piece. Whereas, you know, Monet is not quiet, slow, and fuzzy. It's fuzzy, right? You know, they show you Turner, the Houses of Parliament, you know, that kind of impressionist stuff. So yeah, okay, the shapes and the forms are a little blurry, but but the the art itself is really tactile. I mean, Seurat, I mean, those guys, the pointillists, really tactile and fascinating to look at. But the music, you listen to it for nine minutes, and you're sitting there like going, oh, when is this fawn going to like get you know, wake up and, and do something. So that was the fun. So I didn't really thought much of Debussy at that point. I really didn't. And I kind of sat there until much, much later. I heard La Mer, but strangely enough, it didn't make much of an impression on me at all um, at that time. I mean, I was, I, you know, when you were a kid, some things blow you away and some things just don't, right? Haydn blew me away. Debussy, not so much. So... So meanwhile, I'm approaching high school and I'm in seventh grade and I had a friend who was a year older. His name was Billy. And Billy was a pianist and he was also like a, a soprano, a boy soprano at one point in his life. He was very musical. He had perfect pitch. He was really gifted. And he was playing Debussy's Children's Corner. And that blew me away. I listened to it, especially Dr. Gratis said Parnassum and whatnot. And I was like, wow. This is great. This is so cool. I didn't even remember it was the guy who did that droopy fawn thing. I mean, I really didn't. And and it so inspired me that I decided to start piano lessons again because I'd taken them when I was much younger and then I had given up um, on the, you know, due to the severe lack of talent when it came to this sort of things and a disinclination to practice and parents who were not going to force it because I, and I've told this story before, my father was, was a very gifted pianist and his, his mother made his life a living hell. And so he gave it up. And, and whenever he even saw the piano, he like turned green and started like drooling, you know? So that was an issue. And we had a piano. The piano was my mother's actually, because my mother also played the piano, sort of, kind of. Um, she and I were sort of on the same technical level, which was like, mm. So, so I started taking piano lessons again just to play Debussy's Children's Corner. And I did. I did play Children's Corner. I thought it was marvelous. Actually, I never got snowflakes or dancing. The middle one is much too hard. It was much too difficult for me. All the other numbers I got, it wasn't a problem. Dr. Gratis, Jimbo's Lullaby, the doll thing, you know, that, none of that was a problem. The only thing that happened, and it sort of got me out of the piano again as, I, as soon as I'd gotten in, was Gollywog's Cakewalk, which I loved and which I drove my family crazy playing and practicing Gollywog's Cakewalk. I thought it was just the most delicious little piece. And with the Tristan and Isolde imitations in the middle, it was just funny and, and, and charming. And and I would just be going, do 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 you know, and, 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 and my mother would be like going, stop! It was driving them crazy. And I didn't care. 
I just love that sucker. And I, I got to playing those things pretty well. I really did, as far as my own sort of dismal piano ability is concerned. But then, of course, I decided that I needed to hear what it really sounded like, and I got a recording. And the recording was Arturo Benedetti Michelangeli playing Children's Corner. And I listened to that, and I went, oh, no. No, no, no. If I'm not going to do it like that, I'm not going to do it at all. Well, needless to say, I was never going to do it like that. He didn't even make that thing sound like a piano. I don't know what he was playing. It was like unbelievable, you know, the, the level of sensitivity and touch and, 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 and nuance in those performances. It just, it just depressed me beyond belief. And so I gave up Children's Corner, but I was still hooked on WC. And so from then on, I had no problem. And I really believe, I think, you know, looking back on it, and I, you know, we're, all of our experiences are going to be different. And I know yours was probably very different. But I think the best introduction to Debussy is the piano music because he was such an extraordinary genius when it came to keyboard sonority and harmony. And all of those things, I think, are, are far more evident in the keyboard music than they are in just uh, in an orchestral piece. Remember, he wrote very little orchestral music, comparatively speaking. He really did. And he was, you know, he had other people orchestrate some of his later pieces. He was not by nature an orchestral composer, even though, I, you know, I think the orchestral works are marvelous. I mean, they're genius and I wouldn't change a note. Ravel wanted to reorchestrate La Mer, but that was sort of, you know, there was sort of a you know, pissing match between the two of them. So I think he just said that to get in a dig. But I really think a lot of people did orchestrate La Mer. I mean, Toscanini tinkered with it and, you know, Debussy even tinkered with it. So, yeah, um, but that's not really the point. The point is that I think his style makes the strongest impression in those wonderful piano pieces, the image and the stamp and the, and the, you know, all of that stuff. You know, they're just, they're just glorious works and the preludes, of course. So, and Children's Corner, Children's Corner. Oh, what a great piece that is. And a great piece for classical music beginners. And not because it says children, just because of the, the directness and, uh, and simplicity of expression in the whole thing, which is really quite remarkable. So that was really cool. And one of the things that proves to me anyway, that DBC's keyboard music was really the way to go and getting to know him is that, you know, Andre Kaplay orchestrated uh, Children's Corner. I think it was Kaplay, it was one of those guys. And it sucks. I think the orchestration is terrible. If you know the piano piece, I mean, it's not bad, but if you know the piano piece, then there's just no comparison because, because you hear so much more when you, use the, you know, when you listen to the keyboard original. Whereas when you translate it to the orchestra, even that very beginning of Dr. Gratis, you know, it's clarinet and harp and, and all these instruments exist on different planes of tone and they don't mix and they don't blend. And so, and so sonorities that should be equivalent or that should be perfectly clear become melody and accompaniment, become sub subdued, and, and the balances are all wrong. And even Gollywog's Cakewalk, I, you know, I, I always hear it as almost a wind piece. I mean, it's a cakewalk. It should have more of a jazz band sound, whereas the orchestration is just normal violins. Yeah, da, 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 ba, da, 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 da. I mean, it lacks all the rhythm all the bounce that you can put into it when you play the piano original. So my feeling is that DBC should be initially experienced as a keyboard composer, then you broaden out into his orchestral works. But of course, you might have had a very, very different experience than I did. And I would be very interested to know what it was. So please feel free to let me know, let all of us know how you first encountered the genius that was Debussy. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.